As developers, we spend our days writing code and solving complex problems, all with one goal in mind, creating exceptional user experiences. From an enterprise perspective, this means delivering value to our customers. In today's competitive landscape, the unique experience you offer your customers is what sets your organization apart. The challenge we face as developers is that while we are experts in solving industry-specific problems, our customers only benefit from our work when they can actually use what we've built, whether through a web app, mobile app, or any other sort of interface. However, one of the biggest obstacles in the industry today is getting our code into the hands of customers in an executable form. This process is often delayed by everything that comes between development and delivery. It could be CI-CD pipeline, security protocols, scaling, load balancing, GitOps, DevOps, policy management, maintenance, and much more. Research shows that over 60-70% to 70 of investment is spent on this middle layer, not on what companies excel at or enhancing the customer experience, but on making sure the infrastructure works. That's the problem we are aiming to solve with Corio. There are several approaches to addressing this challenge, but at a high level, the most effective solution is to build a platform. If you look at the CNCF technology landscape, you'll find a wide range of tools and technologies available to assemble into a custom platform. For instance, if you're setting up a CI-CD pipeline, you can choose from a variety of tools that fit your needs and integrate them to build your solution. However, navigating this landscape is far from simple. Building a platform today involves managing significant complexity and making countless decisions across multiple layers of technology. We are addressing this challenge with an internal developer platform. Internal developer platforms are designed to streamline the development process. There are two main types those built for platform engineering teams to create self service environments for their developers and platforms focused directly on empowering developers. Corio combines the best of both worlds. It enables platform engineers to manage infrastructure effortlessly and cater to developer requirements faster, safer, and at scale, while also allowing developers to easily bring their code, connect it to the platform, and deploy it to production, without the need to evaluate or configure a multitude of tools beforehand. This way, both platform engineers and developers can focus on what they do best without the overhead of managing complex setups. Another key aspect of Corio is that we go beyond just addressing the software delivery side of things. While many internal developer platforms focus heavily on delivery, covering aspects like CI-CD, service measures, API gateways, and load balancers, we believe the solution needs to also tackle the challenges of software engineering in a cloud-native world. Modern cloud-native development is complex. It's not just about deploying code, but also understanding microservices architecture, right-sizing components, scaling efficiently, and managing costs. This requires significant investment in both software engineering and operational expertise. Corio aims to solve both sides of the equation by simplifying cloud-native software engineering while also modernizing and streamlining software delivery and operations. By addressing both areas, we help teams build better, more scalable applications with less friction. That said, the typical delivery pipeline or software development lifecycle remains the same. We still need to build the code, which includes compiling, creating Docker images, and so on. We also need to deploy our code, which involves managing secrets, deploying across multiple environments, and we have to make sure it's tested and running smoothly. Then there's also managing the deployment, which means setting up authentication and authorization rules, configuring rate limiting, scaling, load balancing, and monitoring for downtime and observability. Regardless of how we approach it, all these tasks must be done. What we've done with Corio is design it in a way that allows you as a developer to bring your code and move through this entire pipeline with ease. We've simplified the process as much as possible so you can focus on coding while Corio handles the complexity. From a platform engineering standpoint, Corio streamlines infrastructure creation and allows you to set up CI-CD pipelines with minimal effort and no ongoing maintenance. It ensures you remain secure and compliant effortlessly even as regulations change. 
Let's now dive right into Choreo with a demo. I have already logged into Choreo and uh, this is my organization. An organization can have multiple projects. For this demo, I've built an app with a Node.js backend and a React frontend and it also requires a database. Now I'm going to deploy it on Choreo in a well-engineered and seamless way. The first step to do this is to create a project. Let's click on the create project button. I'll provide a project name and a description. I can select a region and click on create. My project is now created. Before I get into the details of creating components, my project requires a database. I'm going to go into my organization view and then go into dependencies and databases to create a database and let me click on create. I'm going to create a Postgres database. I'll call it Hotel Reservation DB and click next. We support multiple cloud providers. You can select a cloud provider of your choice, select a region and select a service plan according to your requirement and click on create. So our database is now getting created. This will take a few minutes. So while the database is getting created, let's go back to our project, which is luxury hotels and let's go into the component creation. So a project can have various types of components. You can create components such as microservices, which could be REST, GraphQL, front-end apps, which can be React, Angular, uh, API proxies that connect to external endpoints, webhooks for event listening. We also support scheduled tasks and manual tasks. Uh, there are also event handlers that can react to Kafka and RabbitMQ events. And we also have test runners for service testing. In my project, I'll be using a service component for the backend and a web application component for the front end. You can either create components individually or if you have multiple components residing in the same repository, you can use this option as well. So I'm going to go ahead and create components individually. Let's get started with the service component. I'll provide the component name and a description. So if you have a public repository URL, you can go ahead and provide your public repository URL or you can authorize with GitHub and connect your repository. Let me select my organization and my repository where my code lies and the branch. So my backend service is a Node.js service. Therefore, I'm going to select the Node.js build pack. We need to provide the project directory as to where your code lies. So this is where my backend service code lies. I'm going to select that and click on continue. I will select the language version and click create. So the component is getting created. What it means here is we are setting up the required deployment pipelines and the things necessary for this component. Once we create the component, a build is automatically triggered as you can see here. You can view details of your build by clicking on this view details button. So what happens here is the code is checked out from GitHub. It is then compiled through the build pack that we selected. Once the compilation is successful, it will create the Docker image. As a developer, I don't have to write a single line of YAML or create the image. It will then scan the image for any vulnerabilities and push it to the image registry. As a developer, I don't have to think about uh, CI/CD tooling or vulnerability scanners or image registries. Everything is handled by Corio. Until this is built, let's go and check whether our database has been created. So my database has already been created and it's in active state. My next step is to connect to the created DB from a DB client and create the necessary tables. I have already completed this step. Let's get back to our component to see whether it has finished building. This is our component. Let's go to the build view. Our build has successfully completed. You also have the option uh, to enable this where it auto builds on each commit. So the next step is to now go and deploy our component. Let's go to the deploy tab. Let's click on configure and deploy. We are now going to give the necessary environment variables that are required for our service. Here I'm going to provide the necessary variables to connect to my database. Let's click on add, provide the DB host. Next, add the DB port, add the user. Next, we will add the database name. And finally, I'm going to add the password and I will mark it as a secret. Now that we have successfully added all our variables, let's go and click next. You can also provide the configurations through a file mount. Now it shows the endpoint details. Uh, my endpoint is a public 
endpoint and its type of rest so these sort of details you can give in a component config.yml file when you're uh, writing your code uh, these details are available in our documentation as well i'm going to go ahead and click on deploy during the deployment process, the system automatically generates the necessary YAML files for Kubernetes, including service and deployment configurations. It then triggers the deployment to Kubernetes and sets up the required network policies. It uh, fully enables security and the observability tools are also activated so that we can monitor logs and metrics. Our service has been deployed to the development environment successfully. So we have this feature called scale to zero. Scale to zero is a cost optimization feature that helps reduce expenses by automatically scaling down resources when there are no incoming requests. Once the system starts receiving requests again, it scales back up to handle them efficiently. So you can enable scale to zero as well. So you also have the opportunity to uh, configure any security or security headers, uh, any specific uh, policies into your resources you can also disable security with the endpoint configurations we can now go ahead and test our service let's go to the test console so we support open api console and we have this ai api chat let's try out both and see and we have a invoke url here and we are also given a security header since our service is secure let's try out the post request let me click on execute So my request is successful. Uh, I have got a 200 response. We also have the ability to test our resource using the AI API chat, which is an AI uh, service by Corio. I'm going to test another endpoint and I'm going to put this prompt and execute. So I'm trying to look at all the available rooms from uh, the 12th of September to the 25th of September. And here it has given me the results saying that there are several rooms, uh, room types available and these are the results and the details that it has given us so now that our service is working as expected we can go into the deploy view and uh, promote it to our next environment which is the production environment let's click on the promote button you can define new configuration values or you can use the same development configurations in ideal scenario you would have new configuration values but let me go and use my development configurations and promote it to production My service has now been successfully promoted into production. The next step is now to go and create the front end component. Let's click on this drop down and click on create new. I'm going to select the web application component. I'll provide a component name and a description. I'll connect my repository and provide the code. So since my application is a React app, I'm going to go and select the React build pack. I'll provide the project directory. It's my front end project directory and click on continue. Here we need to provide the build command for your React app. My command is npm run build and the build path is build. My node version is 20 and click on create. The web application component is now getting created. My web app component is successfully created and it has automatically triggered the build. So the same process I explained before is happening here as well. While the web application component is being built, we have to find a way to connect the backend to the front end. In order to create a relationship between these components, Corio has these features called connection. We can either get this information about connections from the docs or we can also ask our AI assistant, the co-pilot. I'm going to tell it that I have a web app and a backend and I need to connect it to my backend. Uh, whether it can help you with these steps. So this is the prompt. Let's see whether it gives the proper answer. So it tells me uh, first to deploy the backend component, then deploy the front end component and configure it. And here it tells me how to create a connection between the web application. It tells me to go into dependencies and connections and create a connection. Let's go ahead and create a connection. This is the view of the internal marketplace of Corio. It's a collection of everything you have in your organization. You can also click this button and it also takes you to your internal marketplace in another tabular view. It's the same view as the previous one. Uh, you can go and browse for any APIs that are currently available in your organization. 
so i'm going to click on the hotel reservation service which is my back end i will create a connection i call it hotel reservation connection and click on create my connection is now being created i need to uh, copy this code out so that i can add uh, it to the configuration of my front end web app in order to read these configurations you might have to do a few changes within your code let's go to the deploy view and deploy our front end web application let's click on configure and deploy i'm going to provide the connection configuration that i copied previously and click on next for web apps Corio offers a feature called managed authentication instead of the usual process of implementing OAuth logins manually Corio simplifies this with an easy to use mechanism for handling OAuth handshake uh, streamlining authentication setup for your applications uh, so you can provide the post login path and your post logout path and in and the error path it also creates a managed user for you make sure to copy the password and let's click on deploy so our app has been successfully deployed to the development environment we can click on this web app url which will open our web app you can also edit the authentication settings here so we also have this feature called local development which allows the web app running on a local machine to use Corio's managed authentication features you can also configure your authentication keys. So our web application has now loaded. Let's test it out and see. Let's click on get started. This takes us to the Corio managed authentication login view. I'm going to give my username and password and click on sign in. So this is what my app looks like. I can search for specific uh, room types uh, with a specific check-in date and a checkout date I can make a reservation I can also change a reservation and delete a reservation we easily deployed a full stack application using just a few clicks with Corio uh, this app is fully secure it has login integrated uh, so let's go back to the console and explore a few other features let's next move into the observability capabilities of Corio. let's go and visit the metrics and i'm going to select development environment so we also provide an architectural view of the project which displays all the components their relationships uh, and the network interfaces that are exposed this sort of helps you visualize how everything is connected on the right side we have the logs and on the left side we have the architecture diagram we have the static view of the architecture diagram which shows any static de dependencies then we have the runtime view which shows all the runtime dependencies and we also have a architectural drift diagram that we can show this is another interesting feature where it allows you to identify any drifts between your actual data and your intended architectural data so here it shows that architecturally there should be a static dependency between these two components so this is useful in identifying any deltas between your actual application and intended architecture so in addition to this architecture view and the detail logs you can also go into the runtime log section and you can filter uh, the logs uh, based on the component type based on the type of logs uh, the time range the specific environment so you can filter logs accordingly in addition to the project level logs you can also go into the component level logs and we can view the specific logs there we can view the component level matrix let me select the development environment and view for the past 30 minutes um, so here we can see the throughput related data, uh, the latency related data, also any runtime logs uh, here and we can also view the diagnostic views which gives us error and utilization reports. So another uh, section that we have is the DevOps section where you can get details into the Kubernetes level, you can get details about your uh, containers. Uh, the request limits the memory request limits you can also uh, see the cpu usage memory usage you can also go into the uh, real-time logs of these pods 
Uh, so we provided our configs and secrets when we were deploying the service. So you can also go to the configs and secrets tab and provide your uh, configuration and secrets through environment variables or file mount through this view as well. Uh, you can also uh, configure any health checks here. And as I showed before, scaling related configurations are also available here. Uh, where you can scale to zero you can configure the minimum and maximum replicas and uh, you can also see the real-time logs and any conditions and events we also have another interesting matrix called the usage insights i'm going to switch to another org to so show more interesting information so this is the usage insights view in one of the demo organizations in Corio. Uh, so you can get uh, the API request summary details, uh, which gives us the total traffic, error account, error rate. You can also see the API usage over time by the type of application, by target, uh, summary of the API resource usage. You can also see error related data here and uh, latency related data about the top 10 slowest APIs, latency by each category, by each API cache related data for each api the specific devices you can also configure alerts uh, for specific apis and download usage reports we also have delivery insights which tells us about how many releases were made uh, uh, and also provides us dora matrix about the deployment frequency and we can also see business insights which talks about the total traffic error count error rate uh, the latency and all those information uh, that a devops team would need so this becomes very helpful for a devops team so we seamlessly deployed a full stack application on colio and uh, looked at the observability matrix the architecture diagrams and various configurations that we can provide through Corio. If you were to do this manually, it would involve a lot of steps to achieve production readiness. So deploying workloads into Kubernetes environment would uh, require you writing code, setting up gateways, configuring uh, observability, choosing the specific container registry, integrating with the key vault, selecting a login service, managing certificates, firewalls, ingress controllers, and all of these things which can be very overwhelming. So with Corio, all of this is handled automatically. As a developer, all I need to do was point to the code and Corio took care of the rest. So uh, the Corio control plane is where uh, the Corio console UI was lying and uh, everything runs uh, seamlessly in the Corio data plane. So Corio uh, helps you establish your enterprise software engineering practice. We have API first development, domain driven design, microservices architecture, test driven development, automated DevOps, it's secure by default, there's version management, iterative architecture, and AI augmented engineering. From the software delivery and operations, it provides developer self-service, containerization and Kubernetes, CI, CD and GitOps, resource optimization, multi-cloud, multi-environment, observability and alerting we also support config and secret uh, management we also went through how we can scale and configure ha high availability operational and business insights are also available so from an engineering design perspective we created projects and components so a project represents a distinct domain when you create a project this structure physically enforces at runtime each uh, project corresponds to what we call a cell and the cells boundaries are actual network boundaries established during deployment. When a component is deployed within a project, these boundaries are reinforced by Kubernetes network policies. So communication between services within the project is secured with authentication, encryption and mutual TLS. So all of these are automatically enabled and managed by the platform to make sure that it's secure. If we go through the architecture of Curio, uh, this, this is where it all begins, where we have to connect our code and it triggers the building process. Uh, at the top, we have the Corio control plane and this is the Corio data plane. Once your code is connected to the control plane, everything is built and then deployed onto the data plane, which is cloud agnostic. Whether your data plane is on Azure, AWS or GCP, as long as it's a Kubernetes cluster, it will work seamlessly. 
you can manage multiple projects uh, each deployed into its own namespace with network policies enforcing security boundaries the marketplace is something we had a look at and it's in the control plane it enhances discoverability and the reuse of components making it easy to share assets within your organization one other feature that we have is the customized developer portal we can visit the developer portal from here the Corio developer portal is where you can share your APIs and artifacts uh, externally. You can uh, browse APIs here. All the APIs that are publicly available and exposed can be seen here. You can even adjust the portal's theme to suit your branding and easily explore any public APIs that have been made available through the organization. Now we have come to the end of the demo. Hope you got a good understanding as to how Corio as an internal developer platform enables platform engineers to manage infrastructure effortlessly so that they can cater to developer requirements in a faster, safer and scalable manner. And we went through in detail how it allows developers to easily bring their code and connect it to the platform and deploy it to production without the need to evaluate or configure a multitude of tools beforehand. So this way, both platform engineers and developers can focus on what they do best without the overhead of managing complex setups.